Good evening. I'd like to call the Monday, February 19th, 2024, regularly scheduled Berlin Select Board meeting to order. With us tonight, to my left, is Flo <coughs> Smith and Bob Staub. To my right is Tor Nelson, Acting Town Administrator, and Carla Nuizel. I'm Brad Town. And additions or changes to the agenda? Uh, do we have a couple I'd like to add? The first peek at the traffic vehicle ordinance uh, update uh, for Dodge Farm Road. Uh, also under executive session, I'd like to add a item under personnel, and then we can scratch meeting uh, approving approval of minutes. To get us out of here. Uh, any public comment? <clears throat> Hearing none. Um, right of way request to Vine Street. Yeah, we have uh, Mr. Goddard online with us, uh, who is the petitioner. And if he's able, I'll let him jump in and uh, brief us on the uh, project he's got. Yeah, sure. This is Seth Goddard with Preps and Lansing. Uh, good evening. Um, so we're uh, submitting a curb cut application for uh, a solar project that has already been through the uh, 248 uh, permit process. It has its certificate of public good and it has a construction stormwater permit as well. And the project's access goes over uh, an existing um, road, an existing access road from Vine Street that we're looking to formalize um, the entry. You can, that you have the packet there and you can see the pictures of the existing access. It's already a pretty substantial um, access road um, that's there now. Just overgrown over the years. So your the solar project is all approved by the state, right? Correct. Okay. And what are you looking at beginning construction? Don't have exact dates of when they'll be in there, but it, it's looking like uh, likely May would be when they'd be looking to start. Mm. That would be when they would start. Would, the, the first things they would do would be to start uh, driving posts. So don't think they would have tractor trailer deliveries until it'd be the end of May, early June. Any comments, Tim? No, you know what I mean? It's an existing access point. There's been a road there for a long time. We've used it to bring waste material out there. It's definitely a lot easier for them to access that than Midway. So, as far as I'm no concerned, for that access point, as far as I am, it's all flat through there, so there's not much for drainage or anything else. There's just there's one sewer manhole cover right there, but I don't think they're going to be, it's on the uphill side of it, so I don't think it's anything that they're going to get into. Yeah, yeah they did it to Craig, and he didn't, he didn't respond back that there were any issues with it. Yeah. And they indicated they have the Vermont construction stormwater permit as well. Any other questions for... Oh, you said there's still an outstanding question on the, you know, the deposit or, or the bond, and I just recommend approval of this pending receipt of that bond or that de deposit. Is that a motion? No, I will make that a motion. Second. Any other discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Good luck with your building. Thank you all. Have Thank a good you. evening. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Goddard.
Okay, cross town road in mud season. Is that time of year? Seems far away. Right, so neat. So, <laughs> so far away, but we get one every other week. So yeah, it's just, I talked with Tor, you know, last week I think it was about it and everything else and just gonna give you guys a heads up and looking for, you know what I mean? Try to give a week's notice of when we're gonna do it. We'll let it go as long as it can go and we'll get it open as soon as we can. But it's, it's been the problem child all winter. From, How is it holding you know, up so far? It turns to jello pretty quick from about just before Gary Richardson's all the way over to just past the white fence has been yeah. every time it's worn up, I think if you get more than two days above 40, yeah. you start getting six, eight inch ruts pretty quick in it. And How the other roads holding up? The other ones have been really good. We have not had hardly any problems. The front side of the pond has been the other one just at the end of like kind of where it runs along the interstate just as it kind of drifts back into the woods. That's been really the only other problem that's, you know, deep. You know, I mean, we're getting some potholes because of all the warm up and the rain and then it, the biggest problem is, is that the temperatures are dropping so fast on the backside that everything's freezing back up before we can get to them. And then it's hard to put gravel on frozen and then yeah, two days sad. later we get the snow and we're <laughs> half plowing it back off and that's not a very feasible thing but everything else seems to be holding up just fine you know I mean we've minimum gravel that we've hauled to fix the ruts we've done more pothole trying to fix the potholes than than fixing ruts so mm -hmm. Well, so you're looking. You're looking to have. You're just giving us notice so that the two of you can maybe talk and make that call. It's my understanding well, that previously you yeah. have given Tim the, I don't say the blanket or the ongoing authority to close. Last year we had discussed about instead of having to come every year to a meeting and make it a, an agenda item that we would just kind of me and the town administrator would talk prior month prior to try to get it in everybody's head and then if everybody's good with it we can go from year to every year because we'll give it about a month's notice that it might be coming and then when it gets time to doing it we'll try to give a week's notice and then we'll so they can get it out on the pages and mm -hmm. let people know that it's coming so yeah. you have you have signage for at the corner right we have four signs. Yeah. We put one out here on the end of Crosstown itself with Scott Hill and Payne Turnpike North. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we put one at the end of the dirt just as you turn Hill Street extension. And then we put one over Riverton by the old Riverton store. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can have it published on front page forum and have you ever tried putting up signs and not necessarily barricading it? Well, they would either drag the barricades out of the oh, No, I'm just saying don't barricade. No, but they're to the point now where they'll yeah. drag the barricade. We've had people drag the blocks out of the way. Seriously. But if you just yeah, put... We did, they've done it this year again already on Rowell Hill. Yeah. Didn't they have anything better to do? We tried to do it... Well, we used to do it with gravel, and then that got moved or drove over. People with bigger trucks driving over the gravel piles or get moved and then we've had people drag the blocks out of the way with bigger trucks i got one block that's halfway down rowell hill from the top side from somebody this winter it went up from the bottom and dragged the block out of the way and then got to the top and got stuck and then dragged the block down out of the way and they'll find a way to 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 make it and the worst part about it is, is it's if you if you put a pole up <laughs> I bet you 80 to 95 percent of the traffic is not 
resident traffic. So. Right. And, and, and I'm not saying really, when you get ready to close the road, it needs to be closed. Mm -hmm. But leading up to that, if signage was, if just the signage was up, it might, de like it might it deter would... some people because you're looking at that road during the work week, it's yeah. a thousand cars. It's well, plus. It's more, it's it, it's more like 1,500 now. Yeah. The last time, the last study was over 1,500 cars. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's, that's more than the town residents going up and down the road. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I, I was just thinking, you know, leading up to the actual closure, if you can minimize some of the traffic, if, if it would help at all. Yeah. I mean, they can try it, but I, I got the feeling as one once somebody figures it out that the signs are just there and it's not closed. Well, they're just gonna go to. But you must have to leave it open for the resident. I mean, you must have. There must have to be a way to get in. So we close it at the top of the hill over on the far side, at, just after uh, resident three thousand. So there's no residence in between the section that's closed. It's oh, okay. pretty much just the hill. That's where it's always been done. It's because there's no houses in between. So depending on where you live, you have to just have to go. Everybody around. in Riverton would have to yeah. go around, and then, but like last year, it, we got to it late, and a bunch of residents from over on that far end where it gets so bad, um, they had sent a bunch of emails due to the fact that it wasn't closed yet. That cars are beating it up and that there's I say a fair amount of elderly people that live on that end that own smaller vehicles that couldn't get out yeah and then it's hard for us to go that far out and fix it without causing damage to the other mile and a half to get out there. Yeah. and then We've had a few residents that weren't happy about I mean, because if we got to fix it, we got to add material, and then it raises the road and it lowers their driveway, and their driveways are becoming drop offs into their driveway because we're adding material to fix the mud. So we're raising the road every time. I mean, every time you add material, you're raising the road, and the driveways are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and you say fix the mud, the mud's there. Yeah. So unless we remove it, we don't. To really dry fix it out. Right. Yeah. I mean, when we did that, when we did that project over on the other side of the hill three years ago, I, I, I know why. <laughs> you know, I mean, we dug five feet down, and it's nothing but clay and silt the entire way. Once you get below the eight inches of gravel, it's there. And you can see the where the clay moves and the gravel goes down and the clay goes on top of it. It's it's not very good material on that sub base over there. And then it just turns into <coughs> driving on a waterbed. A back road rehabilitation program we should all be thinking about. Options tax. Yeah, I mean we spent <laughs> We spent over 30000 on that section over there, and it was only 150 feet to give you an idea of what you, I mean, we dug it down five feet. We put in a bunch of crushed stone mat, almost 500 feet of drainage pipe in that 150 feet, and then mat, stone, three and a half dense grade, some inch and a half, and then eight inches or better, roughly of a top coat and the drainage pipe is running constant water right now. We've been yeah. watching it this year. This year's been the first year since we did it that it's run water year round. But we've had an abnormal winter as far as moisture goes. True. Anything else on Crosstown? So we don't have to vote on anything, we just No. Just let tour know when you're getting ready to. A week or so before. Thank you. Okay, Tim. Thank you. Um, April eighth, eclipse planning road closures. So apparently there's this eclipse coming on April eighth. Um, my thoughts are it's going to be cloudy that day with 18 inches of snow. 
Let's but, not hope for the eight inches of snow. Uh, but there has been some statewide planning going on this uh, with this for a while. Um, they're concerned about the influx of uh, visitors to Vermont for that weekend, you know, coming from Boston and anywhere else. Um, and previous eclipse, uh, I was looking at one from 2017 in Colorado. They had a lot of traffic congestion issues and stuff of people, you know, going through. Um, the state roads, uh, in interstate road conditions, they will be updated using the 511 system. Uh, any issues on town roads, we'll be using the Waze, W-A-Z-E app and our local social media pages. Um, the State Emergency Operations Center will be activated. Uh, they hope primarily as a training session, but they will be activated in case uh things do happen uh the town we are not anticipating opening our eoc for this but we will be monitoring um 100 eclipse glasses have been ordered from the state um, but they did receive more orders than they had glasses for so i anticipate it may be cut back to 50 uh, that we can hand out to the public and hopefully we'll receive them before town meeting day so we can distribute them there um, and, and as you can see on the map on the back uh, is the map uh, Berlin is on the extreme far th far southern extent of the total eclipse area so the better viewing will be to the north um, but you know there will be a lot of traffic passing through especially on the interstate um, and you know, like I said, there's gonna be visitors from out of town and, and out of state coming through. Um, they will probably trickle in over the weekend since it is a, you know, since the eclipse is on a Monday, they'll probably start coming up Friday and Saturday and spending a long weekend here. But once it's over, they'll probably all head back at once is kind of kind of the concern and wanting to get back home as quickly as they possible. Uh, so it's possible there might be some bottlenecks uh, upstream from Berlin that'll you know backfill into Berlin itself, especially people trying to get off the interstates, trying to get uh, trying to get gas or food or anything like that. Um, I expect heavy demand at gas stations and restaurants. Um, I'm not aware of any organized viewing events in Berlin yet, but uh, many towns in the better viewing areas are putting together and hosting events. Um, the biggest concern is local roads. If out of town people get off the beaten path and get onto our dirt roads and stuff, and not knowing how much season is going to be progressing at that point in time are we going to have an issue with people getting stuck um, i think the good thing is that we don't have a lot of good viewing areas on our on our dirt roads you know because there's, there's limited visibility around uh, but that doesn't mean somebody's going to take a wrong turn get thinking lost. they can find something get lost and get right. stuck so that's really the big thing i think we want to to consider and we don't have to make this decision tonight we got you know uh, you know five weeks before this but um you know do do we want to consider about posting any signs or closing any roads knowing as we said about signs they get ignored anyway so just something to think about we, you know we there are bi-weekly uh conference calls pending conference calls with the state so we'll see as more comes up as we get closer to the uh, event. Mm -hmm. So you asked about signs and closing roads? Uh, some towns are considering doing that on their class four roads. And do we have the signs to close the roads? No, no. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't um, mean we can't get them, but. We can't, yeah. Um, and if you could keep them after the event, I think they would be useful for other, let's say, weather events. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think people are just going to do what they do, apparently. 
you're going you're gonna to have people who will probably come up through and make it a long weekend, but I think what you're going to also find are the ones that, um, those, those last minute travelers. Well, that's, and that's going to be a concern because so, they're not going to have done any planning. So they're, you know, they're not going to have food or water or anything with them. And if there is something, you know, that shuts down the interstate or severely black box up the interstate, yeah. they're not going to do it. The, uh, I know looking at the Comfort Inn, they're already booked out for that weekend. Uh, they're mm -hmm. already full. And then even that Tuesday night, rooms are going for, last I saw, over $400 a room. I'm like, just if we get our options tax on that, but wow, I won't belittle that point. But um, so you'll be seeing more on this as it comes on and just start, you know, thinking about it. Thanks for bringing it to our attention. Do you know what, what time of the day this is going to be at? For? Uh, Afternoonish, two between two and three o'clock, I think. Yeah, um, early afternoon. And there's concern about schools getting out at that time. Yeah, some schools are letting out early. I've not seen anything on the Northfield, if they're in two district that. yet. I don't know about these guys. Yeah, hmm. and for us, it's going to last two minutes. The total the, blackout, the, the, yeah, but the snowstorm's going to last a lot longer. Okay. <laughs> That'll never go away. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else on the eclipse? Yeah. Not unless anybody has any questions. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Um, Payne Turnpike North Flood Repair Grant. So we did receive some grant paperwork from the state, um, even though. Federal Highway Administration is actually funding this. They worked through the state of Vermont to, to get the funding to us. Uh, they did provide the grant agreement on this. The uh, total amount uh, that they anticipate for this project is $1.1 million, of which they will cover $1,033,000 and it leaves us with our local match of 127500 which is typical that there is a local match on these. So I'm just uh, for authorization to sign the grant agreement. So here, a motion to authorize the administrator to uh, sign the grant agreement. I make the motion to authorize the administrator to sign the grant agreement as presented to us this evening. I'll second. Any further discussion? This is just for Painter and Pike North. This is just Painter and Pike North. And, and Richardson Road, is that going to be another project that, that, is, that we might see? That is a FEMA project. Okay. Uh, that <coughs> is currently in design right now. Thank you. And the design work on this one's all done? No, no. In process? No, no. Big <laughs> <laughs> <I can> dream. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Lister's certificate, no appeals or suits pending. Uh, so this is a document the listers provide each year, um, and I sent a copy out in your packet, uh, cover letter f uh, from the listers. Each year in February, the tax department requires us to confirm that we have no appeals or suits pending for the current tax year. I've attached the form for your signatures. This document will be filed with the grand list in the town clerk's office. So I moved that the select board sign the certificate of no appeal or suits pending. Your second? Second. Any discussion on this? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, uh, let's see, Vermont Merchant Management Flood Buyout Agreements. So there are actually four documents in your packet. 
sorry. Or my mom. Uh, and this is dealing with the two properties, uh, 1026 Junction Road and uh, 5010 Vermont Route 12. Uh, the first document is a FEMA model statement of insurances for property acquisition projects. Uh, then there are two maintenance agreements, one for each of the project locations. And lastly is a memorandum of understand memorandum of agreement expedited buyout program from the state. And basically it lists um, what the state would do, what our responsibilities are uh, primarily as far as demolishing any buildings on there and not allowing any other buildings in the future uh, to be allowed on there. So I ask for authority to sign all four of these documents. Your motion? I make the motion to allow our town administrator to sign off on the VEM flood buyout agreement as presented to us this evening. Second. Any further discussion? Where's the one on Mount Luke 12? What's that? I'm sorry. Gotcha. And the other one is uh, Mr. Fairs? Mr. Fair. Fair. Yes. Okay. Uh, any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Um, and just to, I probably should have said this before, this does not um, commit us to the project. Um, or, or commit the property owners to the project, they can pull out at any time prior to the actual closing itself. Okay. Good to know. Because I think that was discussed anyway with uh, the property owner, group Correct. 12 anyway. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, polymorphic credit card processor discussion. <coughs> so, polymorphic is the company we use for the online credit card processing, get your birth certificates and death certificates and do your dog licenses and um, all the things like that online. Uh, the office staff isn't really happy with it. Um, it seems to me to be a very powerful program um, but with that power comes complexities that there are other alternatives out there that, that are a lot easier. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't really know what polymorphic is. I've never used it. Uh, it was done before, you know, between the time I was on the select board. Um, I mean, I see a lot of notes in here about um, future integrations and, and stuff. I mean, I mean it, it, it's almost like a CRM, uh, customer relationship management uh, database that, you know, when you call them Comcast, you know, they, they know who you are and all, you know, what channels you have, all, you know, the last time you paid your bill, your service history, you know, it's kind of like that. It's, it's, you know, your customer service type database. And, and I mean, I see things in here for the process for adopting roads and, and, and things. I mean, I see we even have $38,000 reserved in ARPA for additional polymorphic utilization, uh, which really just seems a lot. Uh, so the Tom Clerk's office has been looking around at other processors, and I'm not looking to make a decision tonight. I'm just I'm going to let you know that this issue is coming up and, and there might be something in, in the future. Um, but one of the ones they looked at is called HeyGov, um, where you can do the credit cards right along the, the credit cards, readers in the office, you, know, you can swipe and tap. Uh, it looks to be a little bit lower um, maintenance. maintenance fee, uh, interchange fee. Um, you know, they get charged back to the users. So I think it's worth pursuing, um, looking at what the other options are out there. You know, that might mean taking a step back from where we are now. But if we're not using what we've got, then 
why I keep it around. I know you're supposed to be able to do like zoning applications on there, and Tom says that's never worked. And you know, it's easy for him just to email a zoning application and try to do it through the website, things like that. So I think it's hmm. time to um, to look at what other options we have out there. I think when we picked them up, we um, they were like the sole sole bidder on that program. I can't remember what program we were using at the time, but I think it was it might have something to do with Nemeric, and it wasn't working well. Okay. And of course, because of the way the credit cards work and the way the budget works, you can't you can't absorb the three percent. Right. And so Polymorphic was the one that came in. That's why we picked them up. But um, I have no no problems. Dropping them too. Okay. You know, if it's if the board feels it's not uh, if it's not uh, in the best interest of the town. We definitely need it functioning properly Correct. for the staff. Mm -hmm. Right. And the other question is how responsive have they been to any complaints? Biomorphic or yeah. I that I don't know. I've not dealt with them at all, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Almost could could it be a training issue, as far as or, or is it just uh, ease of use that it's not there? I, I think some of it is ease of use as far as the capabilities, because okay. um, apparently Rachel can't see what Chelsea is doing. If you know something comes in and it gets assigned to Chelsea, but you know Chelsea leaves that is gone that day or whatever, Rachel can't go in and pick up where it was left off type of thing and, and that's one of the complaints I hear from them. Just use uh, this, this HeyGov is um, compatible with Nemric. They, they were familiar with Nemric was, which I thought was a step right there. They are out of Wisconsin and I may have upset them today because I did tell them that Vermont had the better cheddar so that, <laughs> I may have shot that in the leg, well, but, famous. <laughs> Okay. So more on that will be coming down. Okay. And how has the uh, how has it worked for actually processing the credit cards? Polymorphic. Yeah. I'd have to ask Cal on that. Okay. Anything else on polymorphic? No. If not, uh, impact fees discussion. So we kind of mentioned this once before, uh, that it is an option available for us. And here again, I'm not looking to make a decision on this tonight. Um, but uh, it is an additional source of funding, uh, especially when it comes to uh, new development in the town. Um, one of the concerns I have and you know, from my short term on the development review board, is um, one of the criteria they look at is um, impact on traffic of of a specific project. But they don't look up, take a look at you know a higher view. Well, you know, let's take the mall for instance. You know, we you know we've got the mall, we've got Chestnut Place. We've got um, Fox Run, which has been through the DRB process. We've got Starbucks, which has been through the DRB process. Um, we've got a couple more projects uh, possibly coming in. And we look at the impact of each project, but we don't ever take a look at all the projects combined. You know, and and you know, and they look at traffic counts and peak hour trips and all this stuff. But when you add all this together, you know, each individual project may be fine. But you add all these projects together, are you now looking at a you know a backlog trying to get out of this intersection or onto the intersection and stuff? And you know, that's something to preserve the towns. Uh, interests in uh, in these projects. I know also the fire department um, is very interested in impacts of all these projects as well. I know uh, Deputy Chief Romai brought it up at the last DRB hearing, uh, impact fees. I don't know, 
you, if you've got anything you can add on that or? Um, no, not that he hasn't already. Um, so, and, and I kind of get it if we're looking at individual projects and each one of them have, holds its own impact and the overall is, is greater. Um, so you could almost say the last one to the table is going to be a larger impact, which I don't think would be necessarily fair. Um, you know, if, if what you just mentioned, you know, Mall, Chestnut Place, Fox Run, and then Starbucks, Starbucks last one, it's a higher impact with more traffic coming in, coming in and out. You know, it's, and, and I kind of get it. But can you can you do an impact on an area? And, and, and is that what you were looking at as a bigger picture? I believe we could do an impact on an area. Um, but I know there's also, uh, what was the other fee I was looking at? A special taxing district we could do as well. Okay. But, but um, I'm not saying we need to look at a, I'm, I'm just, Look, I was just using the mall as an example, yep. um, but I'm not saying we need to that I want to limit it to just the mall. But I've I've included in here some FAQs from Lebanon, New Hampshire. I have also included in your email packet the full report and and some of their calculation. Well, they got calculations here too. But the, you know they also look at the impact on schools which you know we primarily would not be be interested but that doesn't mean the school district wouldn't be um, impact on recreation on police and also on the on the fire department uh, i've also included uh, in the email packet a link for uh, burlington which has uh, uh, online calculator you can type in the type of building the square footage and stuff and it'll break down you know how much to how much you would contribute to the fire department and police department and, and everything like that. Um, I you know I, I guess one question for the fire department and I don't know that you've thought about this at all, but you know with all this development coming in or that you know proposed uh, you know a new hotel and restaurants and hopefully along with that a, a lot more housing. Um, what are your equipment needs going to be right. in the future? You know, not just replacing equipment, but adding equipment, adding another fire engine or rescue truck or anything like that. Um, have, you know, our, our, we just went through a little downsizing of the fleet, mm -hmm. just just so we could accommodate uh, a new piece of equipment for us, the Quint, which is both a pumper and an aerial. Okay. Um, so yeah, we are we are thinking of that, um, and and I think with that new hotel, could that right there is on the edge of what we can accommodate as mm -hmm. far as um, the equipment needed. But I'm looking at this, and we see residential and non-residential. A residential impact. Is that for a new house that's going in? That's how I see it. Right, right. I see it as maybe maybe a new community going in. Um, you know, something like Dodge Farm Road, a new community going in. You know, um, if something ever happens at Coos Trail, if that turns into a, a residential community and it was developed as that, that, I, I almost see that as, you know, maybe an impact fee of some sort to the developer, but this, um, but for a single, for a family to go in and say we want to build or whatever that might be, that's a little bit of a deterrent, isn't it? Well, that's the that be the downside, you know, both both the residential and the business size. I mean, you know, we. I think we want to make our, come to Berlin anyway. We want to make ourselves business friendly, but if we're saying we're going to throw this another fee on top of you, that may you know deter them from coming. I'm you know I'm not advocating one way or another for this. I mean, looking at these amounts, to me, that's kind of you know accessible on the bottom of the first page, eight eighty five hundred for a twenty six hundred square foot house. I'm not, and I'm not saying we have to use these right. rates, but 
I'm, I'm talking about, you know, just put in your mind the concept, of, you know, is this something yeah. we want to pursue in the future? And it's, you know, it's going to have to go through a town, you know, meeting vote and everything like that. And I'm, you know, I'm not uh, pushing for it. I'm not advocating for it. I'm just trying to bring to your attention options we have available to us as a board. Mm -hmm. And especially since, you know, other people are starting to talk about this as well. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I didn't realize it was there was a residential impact. I was thinking it was just on commercial about development, but maybe it can be what you want it to be. And at some point, the idea might be to hire a consultant to do that kind of work for us to see what might make sense. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. maybe the planning commission brings somebody in and gets more details and comes back with you know, a proposal or something. Mm -hmm. It is very interesting that it depends on the fee category. Like for example, here it says school fees are assessed only on new residential development. Recreation, police, and fire department fees are assessed to both residential and non-residential development. Based, both sectors have direct impact on such services and yeah. facilities. Very interesting. And I believe that's what Burlington does as well. They don't in, they don't impose the school impact fee on uh, commercial uh, development. I'm definitely interested in learning more and me too. It's very interesting. Okay, anything else on this tour? No, no, I don't see anybody any other yeah. questions. No, but just thinking I just heard I think I heard something on the news about the an estimated two point two billion needed to update schools or something, uh, that's in the state of Vermont. So just just in thinking about that, something like this might <laughs> might be helpful. But mm -hmm. it's huge. Yeah. Okay. Um, and speaking of education, education uh, fund <coughs> statements. Um, the Brian Flo, you heard about this from the town clerk the other night. Um, but the governor signed uh, Bill S one sixty. Uh, which provided relief for the towns from the educational portion of the flooding abatement, uh, tax abatements uh, we considered earlier this fall. So that was always concern in the, <coughs> excuse me, in the uh, abatement request that even though we're granting these abatements to the property owners, it does not affect the town's uh, liability for the education portion of the taxes. This will this will take care of the town's portion on that. So I included the full full bill in your email packet. I didn't print it out tonight, but I just wanted to bring it to your attention that for once we get some good news. Yes, it was very good news. <laughs> okay, anything else on education maintenance? Um, no. Um, Let's see here, USDA Natural Resource Conservation Service, uh, emergency, water. Water. emergency water, watershed protection program. Yeah. Um, so we do have three projects that have been approved by the uh, NRCS, um, currently soliciting engineers uh, to do design work on these projects um, and so hopefully at our next meeting uh, we'll be able to come with some uh, quote you know proposals that we can act on nice. so no no uh, action on this tonight okay um. No other questions on that. Uh, CLA, COD, um, results from the state. So I just had good news, now I got bad news. Um, <laughs> each year uh, we received from the state the equalization study results. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this letter yet or not, um, but uh, the state calculates our COA, our common level of appraisal each year and it came in at 72.29%, which is a significant drop from previous years. 
Uh, under, I believe it's 85%, yeah. the state requires a reappraisal, uh, which we were aware that this date was coming. Um, have, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, a CLA below 85% necessitates re reappraisal. Um, so um, we're here now, we're at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, the other uh, major variable is the coefficient of dispersion, COD, which came in at 19.19%. Uh, anything above 20% also requires the reappraisal so we're right there with with uh, both of these numbers so um i think we're going to be seeing a lot more in the reappraisal coming up in the in the future have you looked into how many companies offer reappraisal services i have not but i'm seeing a fair number of rfps out there on the league's website <laughs> so mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It may be a, it may be a while now. I believe I saw something uh, a bill last year, still in the same biennium, that the state would take take over all of these interesting uh, assessments and appraisals and stuff. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I don't think bad. Well, there. <laughs> I've, I've never seen them. Well, I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Is there a time frame within which this has to be done? I've. Not aware of one, but I'm sure we'll be hearing. hear from them. Yeah. The the trouble, Carla, is that I think there's only one company in the whole state that does municipal reappraisals. Huh. And it sounds like they're flat out. I would imagine. Yeah. yeah. So. How long does it usually take? In the process. Oh, well, I think last time it was done, it took it took them about three months, three, four months. Because, yeah. I mean, they have to inspect every property. Right. Mm -hmm. No, I was thinking it'd be longer. I was thinking, it, so that seems... They got down to a science. Yeah. So, and of course, I mean, they do a lot on the computer, too. Yeah. So. Okay. Let's see here. Select board pay calculations. So... Apparently, the select board pay is based off the number of meetings attended, yep. which was different from when I was on before. There was a flat rate, yep. however many meetings you went to or didn't go to. Um, I know you had questions about yours. I don't know, did you get that resolved with Cali? No, actually, not? I did okay. talk with Cali. So this may have been on the, on the agenda tonight because I did question it. Um, in the years that I've been on the board, and when I first joined the board, I didn't even know there was a stipend. I didn't either. So, so it was a big surprise, but as I've been on the board, the stipend has gone down considerably for me from year to year. And I asked Callie if it was because of uh, withholding. I thought that maybe she did something different this year for withholding. But it used to be in the town report, and it would list our names and how much each of us received. And there is actual, uh, like for example, you're the chair, so you would automatically get the most. But we did vote that it would be based on attendance and then split and divvy that way. And I noticed that mine this year was considerably lower. So you I remember, did question. You gotta, you gotta remember, you haven't got to March yet too. Mm -hmm. So those payments haven't been made to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But each concerned. year it's paid at the same approximate time. It's and based on the calendar year. Right. So like the first year I was on the board, I think the pay was right around 900. And then each year it's gone down. And yeah, right. there's like a chart that they keep track of and they show each of us how many meetings we've attended. Yeah. And then based on that, what the pay is for every select board member. Um, and this year mine was just a little over 600. Huh. So it was considerably different. And like I said, I'm not on the board for the money, but I was just wondering if it was done correctly this year. So and I knew that Callie was learning. So you didn't find out why? It was no, I haven't cashed my check because I just wasn't sure mm -hmm. whether there would be a relook. She did mention that she is aware now that it's based on the meetings that you've attended and 
you know, someone who hasn't been coming to all the meetings obviously would get less and then it would increase on the other end. And if you chair a meeting, you get paid for that as well. So she, it sounded like she was going to take another look at it. Okay. That was the impression I had, which is fine by me. But, you know, the question going forward is, do we want to stay on this type of scale or do we want to go back to the flat rate? I mean, and I understand, you know, last year we had one member who was absent quite a bit. I know previously there was a member that was absent quite a bit. That was kind of the thought between us, but I was on the select board before, there was one member who was absent quite a bit, and nobody else said anything about it, so, I mean, that's... Mm -hmm. And I what I said to Callie is I was just, you know, my, my look on it is just about fairness, you know, and making sure that we're doing what we set out to when we made that decision to, you know, handle it this way. And I told her I wasn't upset in any way, I just wanted to make sure how it was calculated, and if it was just because of the withholding this year, Etc. Yeah. She was wonderful. She said she. And another issue further. is, do we want to raise? You know, think about in the future raising the amount. Um, it's been, it's been that amount for what 15 years now, <laughs> and um, oddly we're, enough, it's not up to us. Well, uh, <laughs> that, but do we want to push for that? <laughs> I can't remember. Is it is it the is it the treasurer or the? I don't think it's town clerk. Town clerk. You have to look at the statute, I think. But uh, I don't know. I mean, it's. But I mean, that well, we are we are considerably lower than a lot of other, even the school district. Yes. We're it lower is. than that. So. Something. To think. Okay. We don't, again, it's not a decision we have to make tonight. No, certainly not. Perhaps we're um, looking at it as performance based. <laughs> well, I think that's what you tried to. Well, what does that mean, Mr. Chair? <laughs> Who, who makes that decision? <laughs> I think maybe the voters. Oh. <laughs> okay. Anything else on the select board today? <laughs> no. Uh, licenses, permits, vouchers, applications. I guess uh, before we do that, if we could take a look at the traffic okay. ordinance, sir. Okay. Um, so we are on track for adopting Dodge Farm Road on April 1st. Um, and as part of that, you know, it'll become a town highway subject to our uh, town ordinances. So, um, and, and since this is a, you know, a, a updating an ordinance is a lengthy uh, process, um, getting started on it now. Um, so, in the uh, in your packet, I did print out a copy of the ordinance. Now, the, the, the first change I'd like to make is uh, the heading there under section one. If you notice, some of the sections are numerical and some are Roman, Roman numerals. Mm -hmm. I like to, that drives me crazy, so I'd like to make them all Roman numerals. So change section one to section I. Mm -hmm. uh, the next is this isn't this isn't numbered but one two on page three the third page um it starts at the top it's with stewart road mm -hmm. uh, but about halfway down uh it says partridge road uh correct that to say partridge farm road which is its official name now uh then at the bottom of page four, add in, um, of course this is for speed limit, so add in for Dodge Farm Road, Town Highway 83, maximum speed limit of 25 miles an hour for its entire length. Mm -hmm. uh, top next page, section five would be section V. And this is on stop and yield intersections. And at the top of the next page, Town Highway 83, which is our newly named Dodge Farm Road, entering Town ha Highway 5, which is Scott Hill Road, be a stop sign there. How are the speed limits determined? <laughs> and on that I, well, um, I 
Well, the, well, the speed limit sign that's there now is 25, so that's what I went with. Yeah, yeah. I did query some of the residents on there if they wanted to change it. None of them wanted to change. I thought maybe one might want to raise it to 70 or something, but I didn't put any takers. Um, I think it's ideally there would be a traffic study done, which is um, basically a radar clocking of 100 vehicles, and you go with the uh, 85th percent, what 85 percent that speed is what you set it at. Uh, I know that's what state does for their uh, their calculations in theory. Um, and sometimes you'll see them out there, you know, a car, you know, a state car sitting on the side of the road taking the radar measurements and stuff. And speaking of speed limits, I believe there used to be a sign coming down from Crosstown toward here, uh, right around the bridge or under the bridge or just past. And that sign's not there anymore. I'm not sure hmm. why. And and I know that's where they put their uh, PD will put their their traveling. Speed right or cart, yeah. right. whatever, right. Car, whatever. Um, I think that thirty mile an hour sign is closer to Scott Hill intersection. Oh. It's on the other side of the okay. overpass. I could have sworn there had the been one further up in the. So past. there's there's thirty five coming down the hill, mm -hmm. and then it turns to thirty just after the overpass. Mm -hmm. um, but it's. I don't want to like go off that. No, I just was curious. Okay. No, we don't so have I know an unposted dirt road um, is 40 miles an hour. Right. And an unposted paved road is 50. So as long as we have them posted, we can we can have them anything we want. What's kind of curious, or, or I'm curious on how Comstock is, 40. is posted as 40. Yeah. Well. And and, and I kind of get it. You have one resident out there, but if you go out there road. in the summertime. <laughs> I'm going to say there's a lot of people up in an industrial lane area that may go out for their daytime walks. That's 40 on that back road is pretty fast. And I don't know if we did 85% of whatever that car counter was doing and we counted all the, the traffic that I'm going to say is driving excessively fast and it allows us to go to 40 miles an hour. <laughs> um, where it would be really it really surprises me that Crosstown is 35 because if I take 85% of the people traveling that road, it's greater than 35. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just curious on, on Comstock and why it's 40 and should it be 40 and, and is that for truck traffic? Uh, yeah, it I'm shouldn't just, be much on there. Anyway, it's just a curiosity because I know because Hill Street's 25 and Stuart Road's 30, and I'm like, what? What's the di you know why? What's the difference? Like, why is one? Just mm -hmm. I've always wondered that. Um, so the next steps is on March 1st will warn uh, a public hearing. Uh, in the newspaper and posted in three places. Um, April 15th, we will hold the public hearing and possible adoption. Uh, that will start the 60 day uh, protest period. Uh, April 16th, um, the text will be entered into the minutes and posted in five places, as well as a notice of adoption in the newspaper and then barring any appeals on June 15th, uh, this ordinance will go, you know, these, this amendment will go into effect. So that's why I mean it's a, uh, it's a lengthy process. So it's just the first step of that process. Okay. Thank you, Tor. Okay. Anything I, yeah, actually I, I do. And every year I ask this. And I'll see if you remember what you say every year to me. Anyway, so I'm just looking at the fines. And we're talking about the handicap zone. Oh, that's a $100 fine. Fire lane, 50. Double park, 25. Blocking driveways. You know, down through. And so I see the fire hydrant is 100. I mean, 
So in my world, why is that fire lane so less? Is that not important? I think they're all important. Improper parking is, is and that's $25. So is that $25 on top of everything else that you just got fined for? <laughs> or does oh, that that's, actually? That's for something that's not covered under the other category. <laughs> that's what I would think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. Mm -hmm. That's the way I interpret Maybe it. Maybe cross the, you crossed the line, you parked in the middle or something. I don't know. Well, you could be blocking someone's driveway and only get fined for $25, but that person has a, a real need to get out and causes some, some, I don't know, life issue with these people. And that's only 25. <coughs> and, and so is this for public roads? <coughs> well, we can't take and do anything on a private road. OK, so um, parking lots. <coughs> Excuse me. No. So the handicap signs up at, let's say, Shaw's or um, the mall, Anyone can actually park there and not get fined. I don't think you have to look into the um, state ordinance on that. But the actual handicap, that's uh, state, that's the uh, accessibility. Your ADA. ADA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So wait a minute. These aren't for parking lots? <laughs> like. Where, where are you going to find fire lanes? Right. Other than in a... Or a handicapped parking. Yeah. Besides maybe here at the yeah. town office and a few other places. See, we... I don't believe the town has the authority to uh, <laughs> go in and enforce, but it's a good question for the lawyer. Yeah. So no, like the... Stop signs and stuff. We can't enforce those yeah. on private property. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, you mean? Oh, you mean because? This is curious. So yeah, you're it's, blocking it's, driveways. That's something we can do. Yeah, that's on the town road. You're you're dealing here with private property, commercial, but still private, in the town's authority. And I would take and get a hold of Steve and. Ask him because it may be delegated by the state to the town. Yeah. And uh, there, you know, because you would think that if we have, yeah, if we had that, that we ought to be able to enforce it. But. Yeah. And then the other I'm thing. I'm curious. The, the other thing is, if we can, if we can enforce and, and ticket, perhaps we should take and bring them all up to hundred dollars. What's hundred dollars a day? Depends who you who you're finding. Yeah. But I mean, I I do think that uh, you know the the handicap zone and the fire lane should both be comparable. Mm -hmm. But you'd have to find out from uh, from the lawyer just for, just what the uh, authority of the town is. Mm -hmm. I agree. I know that my appeal is handicapped is three hundred and six dollars. Wow. Which they're never going to see a penny on the front frame. Yeah, I'm curious about what the enforcement authority is. That would be interesting to find out. I mean, not that PD isn't busy enough as it is. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, but just. But have we? But have we, we. I guess you know. Do we have issues? I guess you know. You know. Do we have a parking problem? I don't know. You know what you see as far as fire lanes. It's you know I don't pay much attention to it on occasion there, but I do pay attention to handicap <laughs> spots. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> where I don't pay attention. Right. Yeah. So sorry. <laughs> I I am apt to see at the shopping center, and down at uh, Price Chopper and whatnot. You will see uh, handicapped people parked in the fire lane, getting in and out of the car. That's different. Yeah. But I mean, the car isn't parked there for any length of time, mm -hmm. you know, two, three minutes. Yeah. Well, find out what the lawyer has to say, and mm -hmm. we'll take a look at it. Okay. Um, 
approval license permits vouchers applications I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 24 G 18 from payroll from January 28 2024 to February 10th of this year to be paid on February 14th 2024 in the amount of sixty thousand eight hundred forty nine dollars and forty three cents and payable warrant 24 G 19 with check number 23703 to 23741 in the amount of $180,148.87. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, approval of minutes, store. Uh, scratch that. Are, did you find out about the uh, having to do a um, amendment to it? I have not checked on that. Okay. Round table flow? No, nothing. Thank you. Joe? Um, I'm going to put a plug in for the fire department. March 23rd, Saturday, they're going to be having a pie breakfast. You will start seeing flyers and things on social media. It was a great uh, community event where you do have um, a local entertainer, um, Ray Burke and his, and his son Sam um, and company will be there playing again this year um, yeah nice. it was well received their first time last year and I can't wait it was very well received Donna Thunder was singing as well yes. last year and uh, it was well attended and I've seen the announcements on social media already and other places yeah I just saw yeah. it somewhere yeah yeah it's Don't exciting <laughs> gotta go yeah I'm, I'm gonna go this in place year. yeah yeah is the fire department doing lunch at town meeting? They are doing lunch at town meeting. Right, cool. I got to get hold of Rachel. That's wonderful too. That was also excellent, that was excellent last year. year. Roundtable, Carla. Nothing. Tour? I got nothing. Uh, Four? Yeah, just a moment. I did provide a copy of the budget status report on the table. I've not looked at it myself, so I don't know if there's any surprises in there or not, but it's been a while since you've seen one. Um, the other, I just kind of wanted to go over the town meeting uh, schedule. Uh, Saturday, March 2nd at 10 a.m. at the school will be the traditional pre-town meeting, which is where they go over the items on the Australian ballot and then the actual floor vote itself uh, for the town meeting. Then on Tuesday, March 5th, from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., the polls are open here for the Australian ballots at the town office at 7 p.m. Rachel would help like anybody uh, who can help count the ballots uh, to be here. I know that's a fire department night, but uh, Everybody else is uh, encouraged to be here for that. I will be. In pre-town meeting? Uh, March 2nd at 10 a.m. In town meeting? We're immediately following. There we go. So the pre-town meeting is on town meeting day? Correct. Okay. Have we done yeah. that before? Last we year. did last year. I guess I didn't attend. <laughs> oh. Well, you were on the board. No, but I still try to go. But. Okay, uh, anything else for round table? No, I do not. And do we have an executive session tonight? We do. Entertain a motion. We for got a biggie here. So, I make the motion. Uh, uh, I move that there is a specific finding of premature general public knowledge would clearly place the town of Berlin at a substantial disadvantage. Do you expect a vote? At well, the no, that's, we got we to gotta act on this motion first. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Now, I move to enter into executive session to discuss the police department contract under 1 VSA 313A1A and also to enter into executive session to discuss personnel under 1 VSA 313A3. No action is expected on either discussion. Second. Second. Oh. <laughs> Jinx. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carla whispers. We are now in the second session. <laughs>